Newton's third law states that every action force has an equal and opposite reaction force. When we talk about an action force, we're talking about one object applying a force to another. And when that happens, the second object applies an equal force in the opposite direction back on the original object. Like when we kick a soccer ball, what's going on? So when we kick a soccer ball, we obviously apply a force. We'll call it F1, force one. We kick the ball, right? Force two though, this is kind of a crazy thing. The ball provides a force back on our foot that is equal and in the opposite direction. Check it out, you can see it. Yeah, so we push the ball and the ball pushes back on us. And one of the ways that we know this is that it hurts to kick a ball in bare feet. So uh, Mace, you wanna kick that bowling ball? No. Why not? Because it's heavy and it's gonna hurt. I'll well, give it a try. So if we kick a ball with 10 newtons of force and the ball hits us with 10 newtons of force, why does the ball move? Well, 10 newtons is enough to accelerate a one kilogram soccer ball, but 10 newtons isn't really enough to um, slow down or change the motion of our foot. Even though our foot probably slows slightly when we kick the ball, um, the force has to do with the object. What happens when we're going on with a wall? Well, when we run into a wall, we run into a wall with a certain amount of force. We apply a force to the wall, F1, right? We'll say 100 newtons of force, even though Bo totally didn't do that. The wall provides an equal and opposite force back to us of 100 newtons. So we obviously aren't going to knock the wall over because that 100 newtons of force isn't enough to push through the wall, but 100 newtons is enough to slow our motion down. Or in the case of a ball, to just bounce it right back. How about jumping? Well, Again, in order to jump, you have to push down on the earth. When you push down on the earth, the earth also pushes back up on you. And if we were to push down on the earth with 50 newtons of force and the earth pushes up on us with 50 newtons of force, well, 50 newtons is enough to change our motion and accelerate us upwards, but it's not enough to change the motion of the earth, right? It would take a whole lot of newtons to change the motion of the planet. So we're pushing on the planet, the planet's pushing on us. And that's how a ball bounces too. Now, what if two objects of the same mass run into each other? Well, person one applies a force on person two and person two applies an equal force in the opposite direction back on person one. Typically what happens in this scenario is that both objects then are going to accelerate equally and in the opposite direction, right? So each person is going to fall backwards um, because we get of equal acceleration of equal force on equal mass, which you can see here with the marbles. An important distinction with this law is that the action reaction happens simultaneously. So when I hit this concrete, oh my gosh, that was really hard. Um, I hit the concrete, I apply a force to the concrete, right? The concrete applies a force back to me. It's not that I apply a force to the concrete and then after that, the concrete applies a force back to me. The action reaction happens equal and opposite and at the exact same time they're simultaneous so when i apply a force to the concrete the concrete applies a force right back to my hand newton's cradle is a really fun demonstration of newton's third law because it shows us really clearly these action and reaction force pairs so if i take this one mass and lift up off of this side um, we can see that the action force right is that it's going to come in this way um, and the in and out is sort of expected right? The key is that the action force comes down and is applied to these um, other balls. And what happens is that that force causes the first object to slow down or stop moving, right? Because this object comes in and then comes to a stop. So it accelerates negatively. The force is transferred through these other balls and comes out the other side causing this object at the end to move. And then that object is pulled back down by gravity, action force through, and then causes this one to move out, right? So um, when I do two and I increase the mass in, check out what happens. Two in, two out, right? So that energy is conserved, the momentum is conserved, and we get two in and two out. So the action force in, causes the same reaction to go out. Now watch this, this one's really fun. Watch what happens if I do three. Yeah, still works. I'm blowing your mind right now, huh? And 
Everybody loves this one when I do four. So exciting. What do you think is gonna happen if I grab two at the same time and allow them to fall? Oh boy, look, the action reaction continues to move through. How about two and two? Probably didn't fool you too much on this one. Not too much of a mind bender here, right? Because the action reaction force stays the same. But what if I did one and two? Oh yeah, it's gonna happen. Mine's bent, right? So the action force in and the reaction force that occurs because of it between two objects is always equal and opposite. And because all of these balls weigh the same mass, it results in the same um, motion in the opposite direction of the balls on the other side.